It's been a pleasure this year to have known you all and to have served as your president, and I feel privileged to have been part of a, such a successful group of individuals with the same common goals. Uh, we've been helping one another to grow our businesses, and I look forward to sharing our leads and our referrals with you and help you grow your business for next year and still serving on the board. I'll be passing the torch to Matt Lawson. He's with AML Communications, and he'll be your new president for next year. Stand up, Matt. We'd like to give you a round of applause and welcome you. I want to thank the board members for this year that have worked real hard um, just to do everything that we do. Deanna and Robert, they set up this room, do a great job of the website. Thank you, thank you dearly. We couldn't do it without you. If the board members would all stand up, we'd like to give you all a round of applause for this year. We have one announcement, an important announcement. Um, we're having to move our luncheons as of January to the third Thursday of each month. We're still in this location. Um, the city of Hiram has had to move their dates around and they're having their court date on the day we usually have our luncheons here on Thursday. So as of January, information will be on the website, our luncheons will be on the third Thursday of every month. And I still would like to say to Deanna, thank you so much for everything you do. <laughs> she does a great job. We're excited about our guest speaker today, Mr. Tommy Graham. He's the Parting County Post 3 Commissioner. I'd like to invite him up to what's a podium here today. <laughs> and he's going to have, we, we, we'll be open up afterwards for questions. Mr. Tommy Graham, thank you. Thank you. And Pat, they say I have an accent. <laughs> it, it's actually y'all. That's the proper saying. Uh, first thing, I want to apologize if y'all thought your speaker was going to come in a suit and tie today, but actually on June 28, 1991, I gave those up when I got out of the banking business and got into an honest line of work. There is no need for a suit and tie. But Deanna had asked me to come and, and talk to, to y'all about the Atlanta Film Studio, Paulding County. Uh, to give you a little background of how we got here, first thing you have to realize is the state of Georgia offers tax credits for film, films and productions that are shot here. There's a state tax credit that they can use against their state income tax. And there is actually a secondary market that you can sell those tax credits. So if Paramount's here, they're doing shooting, there's a secondary market to sell those tax credits that General Patton over here could buy when you climb against his income tax. So that's one thing that's driving the film industry in Georgia. How we got involved was there is a, was a group that actually were looking at doing a, a studio down at Lovejoy Field in Henry County, which is owned by Clayton County. Well, we met a group, or, or the people that were working them were called Roadtown Enterprises. And that is who we have actually hired to design uh, and operate this facility. Also, during this time, Footloose was shot here in Hiram. Uh, we got a tour of all that. And, and one of the, I mean, you got to see all of the activity that was going on. I mean, if you were here, there might have been five actors out there, but there were 125 people swarmed around town that did stuff. Now, I don't know what they all did, but they said they did stuff and they got paid for doing it. So anyway, one of the things that we, we learned from that is they kept telling us is make sure you're in the zone, okay? Make sure you're in the zone. That's what drives it. Um, also, during that time, the IOXI president, Bobby Vasquez, he's not a native of County and neither Pat, um, he visited here. Now, he is the international president, and, and what IOXI is, is the, the film industry is heavily unionized between the, team, the Teamsters, and I'm not talking about the actors, I'm talking about anybody else, between the Teamsters and IOXI. Uh, I actually, if, if you're going to work on a set, if you're a carpenter and you're building a set, if you're an electrician, whatever you do, you've got to be a union member. So, anyway, he visited Paulding County, okay, to, to look, to see what we had, um, and he liked it. <laughs> so, I, you know, with this in mind, we started proceeding. 
we developed a, a relationship with Rotown Enterprises. Now their theory was that, that the credits are drawing the film industry to Georgia. Okay, everybody's got credits. But what you have to do is you have to develop the infrastructure. If you have infrastructure in place, with or without the credits, they'll shoot films here. So that, that's what their driving point was. Nick Smerrigan and Jeremy Harrington are the principals in, in Rotown. Actually, Nick owns it. Now, Nick has owned several studios in Los Angeles. They have designed, built, and, and when I say built, they don't physically build it, but they're, uh, they, they do the, the, uh, the design and the layout and the concept of what you gotta have to have a film studio. But they've done this in New Mexico, in Mississippi, in Prague. So, I mean, they're, they're connected. This is what they've done all their life. All right, now, now as you got to t get to talking to them, you, you learn about the jobs that are involved in the film industry. It's far beyond actors. Um, you've got the service part. There's lighting, there's grip, expendables, post-production, security, janitorial, and the list goes on. You've got the jobs on a film or TV production. You've got construction, rigging, camera, makeup, craft services, wardrobe, laborers, many, many more, both skilled and unskilled. And then you've got the affiliated things that when they're in town, you have, they're affecting hotels, restaurants, catering, food service, um, rental uh, places, uh, security services, uh, lumber yards, hardware stores. The list just goes on because they spend money, build it, tear it down, throw it away, and go home. So now, now to put this together that the actual Atlanta Film Studio is owned by the Industrial Building Authority. The land, the building, all of that is, is owned by the Industrial Building Authority. This was, a, uh, those of y'all that know David Austin, our chairman, uh, he gets many, many ideas, okay? And lots of them are really stupid, okay? <laughs> and some people have to chase some of his ideas, okay? And some of them I've had to chase are really stupid, okay? <laughs> But this one was one of his ideas, and I'm the one that, that he tasked or, or asked to chase this and find out would this thing really work. So between David and I and, and Ken Thickpen and, and Blake Swalford and Mike Jones, we continued to meet with Rotan over about a year's process. What we finally came down to, that yes, it made economic sense. It made sense to do a deal like this. The number one question was what we learned from Footloose. If we're not in the zone, it doesn't make economic sense. And what that is, is, and it's controlled by the Teamsters and IOPSI. You, and it depends on what kind of mood they're in, okay? Sometimes it's 30 miles from the capital. Sometimes it's another number. So what we did is, is back October of 2010, we hired Roadtown to get us a letter of agreement with the the United, with the Teamsters International and with IOPSI that said if we built a film studio in Paulding County, it would be in the zone. See now, this is the only studio north of I-20. You've got, a, uh, of course, I know Screen Gems built a, or actually built a new studio at the old Lakewood Fairgrounds, all right? You've got a studio that is down in Sonoa that's been there for years, but they're not in the zone and won't ever be in the zone. And what that is, is that changes the cost of shooting there. Because even though, you know, you, you may live down the street, but if where you're working is not in the zone, they have to pay you differently. They have to pay you more cost and all that. So they actually got a letter from, from Teamsters and from Ioxy that said if we build a studio here, they would agree to that it would be in the zone. So we got it confirmed that we would be in the zone. Another thing that was interesting when, when Bobby came out here from, from IOXY was that he said the majority of his union members in the local, okay, which he lives in Peachtree City, live north of I-20. So his people are already out here. That's why he liked this thing. So with that, once we had that in hand, we decided that 
that we would do this. Now, the business model is, is based on a 62% occupancy, okay? Now, their occupancy is, again, they're the film industry, so they're different. Their occupancy is by the day. They only rent five days a week. They don't rent two, those two days. So, but anyway, it, it's based on 62% occupancy. At 62% occupancy, it pays for itself, retires the debt, and turns a small profit. So, and again, the IBA owns the building. They have a contract with Roadtown Enterprises, who is the manager of the facility. There is, there'll be one or two employees, and there'll be employees of the entity that the IBA owns, okay? Now, there's a backup plan to this. Now, they, they went out, the IBA went out and bought 11 acres, a building that was, uh, had been foreclosed on by the bank, and, and they bought this out of foreclosure. Uh, on the 11 acres, they have built a two 20,000 square foot sound stages. Uh, these things have 37 foot ceiling heights, the grids to hang a, a truck from the, from the ceiling. Uh, it's got this, this blanket, I think it's called Insequil. You can be inside that studio. In fact, one day they were inside the studio, inside one side that was complete. The other side, they were doing welding and stuff on the grid, and you couldn't hear them from the other side. So, I mean, it's it's laid out and done as as a studio would be. So, but there's a backup plan. Let's just say that it it doesn't work. All right, we still have 11 acres of industrial property. We have a 30,000 square foot facility that is both office and. Uh, can be warehousing. We have a 40,000 square foot building and we still got more land. So you still got a, a facility that can be used for any other industry that you attempt to attract to the county. So like I say, we went forward. We, they bought the, the 110 Thompson Road and the 11 acres. We sold the bonds. The IBA actually sold the bonds. The county has to back those bonds. There's other things in that development, but that part of the bonds are paid for or paid back through the revenues of the studio. Roadtown is contracted with a three-year deal. They actually had a construction um, contract. Um, that during that phase, they renovated the 30,000 square feet for both offices and mill space, the, the mill work space. They built the two studios. Back at the end of November, the, the studio, or the buildings themselves are complete. Currently, Roadtown is, is testing the facility. Uh, Pascal Lighting, which is based out of Los Angeles, they have a... Uh, facility in Atlanta, they have a facility in New Orleans, they've actually signed an agreement that they are the, the lighting provider for the studio, so they have a presence in Paulding County. Now see, the content, the, the concept behind this, there, there is a lot of filming going on in Atlanta. Right now, if you want to film, what you do is you go find a vacant warehouse and you go rent that warehouse for a period of time and you gotta bring all this stuff, you gotta go find it. What Atlanta Film Studio does is if you wanna shoot a film, anything you need is there, okay? Whether you need lighting cameras, rentals, catering, it's a one-stop shop. And the way it's offered, it's actually Atlanta Film Studio makes a profit off of those things, the deal with Pascal Lighting. They, anything they need comes through Pascal. Pascal pays us, in essence, a finder's fee. Uh, in fact, yesterday, Pascal's crew was out there, as they told me, and I have no idea what it means. They loaded a three-ton truck with a, with a lighting package, similar to what they used on um, Fast Five or Walking Dead, and came out and set it up. They tested everything. Hertz Rental. Uh, provided all of the equipment, Hertz Rental, the entertainment division, which they're participating in there. United Rentals brought out a, a in, the, in a film studio, they got tons of air conditioning, but the way it works is you rent it. That Hertz, not Hertz, but United brought out a 30-ton air conditioning unit, which is what they use to heat one stage. 
as I understand it, they turn it on and everything's running and it's all wonderful. And when they get ready to shoot, bam, they cut it off instantly. They shoot. When they're done shooting, they got to cut it all back on. So Hertz came out and tested, or National United came out and tested all of that. So everything's going good. They're going well. They're moving through the process. The plan is to open next month, that they'll be open for business. Um, now, your very first question is, are there any scheduled productions yet? And the answer to that is none that can be announced. Okay? There's none that, that have ink dried, but there's lots of interest. There have been several large groups that have come from California specifically here to see the facility more than one time. Okay, so that there's tons of interest about doing stuff. They're trying to work out some of the, some of the details of this, but they're very optimistic. Uh, you know, the excitement, and of course they're studio people or they're California people, so, you know, everything's lovely and wonderful to them. But they know what they're doing, uh, and the interest is good. You know, I believe that, that this is something good for Paul and Ken. As I've said before, we're, we're in economic times that nobody here has ever seen. We're in times that I don't think anybody has seen. They're different. And we can sit around all day long and talk about how bad it is. We can talk about how it used to be. And we can talk, 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 and at the end of the day, ain't nothing going to be no better. Yeah, I know that wasn't proper English, Pat, but anyway. <laughs> And y'all may have to translate some of the stuff for her <laughs> that I've said. So, De Deanna, you can help her along. If she didn't understand something, you'll fill in. Okay. But, or we can try to do something. You know, our future is up to us. Okay? It's up to us to make Paulding County what we want it. Now, everybody's out there looking for people to to facilitate jobs. Everybody's out there trying to do the same things. Sometimes you got to do something a little different. And I'll grant it to say this is a little different. <laughs> a lot of people have thought, you know, are you crazy? But let, let me give you a little information that, that just in Toronto, Canada, way up north from here, there is a studio there in Toronto. I think it's a 25,000 square foot facility that is 25% owned by the city of Toronto. They did a similar thing. All right. They shot a movie up there called Total Recall. The IOXI Union reports that his people, and these are carpenters and lighting and grip, and I don't even know what a grip looks like, but lighting and grip and all these people, that their payroll in Toronto for that one shooting was $25 million for payroll, okay? At the peak of shooting on um, Total Recall, there were 600 people employed. That's not, I mean, that has nothing to do with the actors and stuff. At many times, there were more than 300 carpenters. That's them people that drive nails and build stuff, which we, used, we still have a lot of them here. They just don't have jobs. Uh, that's, there were 300 carpenters employed at one point in time. So this is an opportunity to do something different that can actually put some of our people back to work. And again, as I've, I've said before, Nick Merrigan says that these people... When you talk about the film industry, they come to town, they spend money, and they go home. Okay? They don't tax your infrastructure. They just spend money. You know? And it doesn't matter to them. So, telephone's ringing for you, Dan. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have... Anybody other than Pat, does anybody have questions? I do have questions. Okay. And, and as I told I, that, hey, anybody other than, now Pat, you can ask all you want. And as I told you, if I don't know the answer, I promise I'll make it up. I mean, I'll find you an answer, but yes. Georgia's a right to work state, so these unemployed carpenters are going to have to join the union to be able to do that work. 
Will that then affect if the housing or other opportunities come? No, they, in, in order to work on that film state set, they have to be without in part of the IOXI union. Okay, and IOXI will actually train them to do the jobs that are necessary for what them to do. But no, it's just like there's carpenter union now, and there's certain jobs you could be a member of the carpenter union, but in order to work on that set, you'll have to be an IOXI member. Okay. Yes? Tom, for, for a local person that's interested in, in working on film or partial, what have you, who does that person contact now? Right now, they would contact a gentleman named Jeremy Harrington, okay, and I'll get you his number. There will actually be a facility manager that is on the ground there that you could talk to. For, but right now, it's Jeremy Jeremy Harrington. Other questions? Come on, y'all are not speechless. It does seem innovative and seem like a good idea. Uh, it's kind of funny that Cobb County or, or somebody, somebody like that wouldn't have thought about it before we did. Is, I mean, the, obviously there's no other facility like that because you said there's no none above I-20. There's none above I-20. The, uh, of course, uh, you've got Strange Gym that, that has one at the fairgrounds at Lakewood. Uh, the one down in Sonoma has been there for years. Tyler Perry has a facility that shoots. Um, but no, nobody's See, it, it, it's, it's, you don't just build a film studio and they will come, okay? Somebody has to understand the industry, okay? Somebody has to, I, I ain't got a clue who to talk to to get a film located here. Um, you know, but they do. They describe this process of, uh, or I'll, I'll say this, last year when the legislature was in, you know, there was a lot of talk about what would they do with the film, with the credits, okay? I can tell you that the people in California knew more about what was going on on those credits before we ever knew it was going on. They, they're in touch with people. They understand that when there is a movie being talked to, they know who to talk to. They talk to somebody named a, a line producer. I got no clue what that is. But that has something to do with somebody that chooses where to shoot it. Um, you, you know, you, you in order to do a facility, you got to have somebody that is connected with the industry that can bring them here. So really what we own is a building that is built to their specs and we hired them to manage that building and bring people here. We hired, in essence, a real estate agent to lease the building for us. They just lease it to film studios. And they know what those film studios want. I'll go ahead and ask a question. Uh, the, uh, uh, when I did talk to Samaritan, he suggested that this was a new style of studio in a sense. Uh, that it's a little bit more bare bones, uh, lower cost. Is that going to have a cost advantage? Yes, that, that, was, that was part of what their appeal and their design was, was to, because see what you're competing right now because of the tax credits, you're competing with a vacant warehouse that may be owned by a bank or may be owned by somebody that just wants to get somebody to move into it. So you've got to be able to compete with that market. And so that's what they've done is design something that fits everything that the film studio or, or that the, whoever's shooting the production needs, it's there and they don't have to find it. For instance, if you go in and rent a warehouse that you're going to shoot in, you've got to buy all that ends quilt and put it up. And then when you're done, you throw it away. I mean, the ENSA quilt for that building was one hundred and fifty something thousand dollars. And if they go rent a vacant warehouse, they're going to buy the stuff, put it up, pay somebody to put it up. When they're done, they're going to throw it away because they don't need no more. Well, I, I was thinking in terms of the New Mexico uh, studios, which they were involved in, and uh, I think that's where Breaking Bad was done. Whatever, but Book of Eli, I think, was done there. Yeah, I think some other movies, but uh, the cost. Uh, the cost factor there was it's a $97 million facility. Right. Yeah. They, they, uh, 
Roadtown did not have control of the money. They were hired to do a facility and to fill it and operate it. Whereas in our case, for lack of a better word, it was kind of cheap. You know, we can't afford $97 million, and the model doesn't make sense. So, in fact, the model we first saw that was proposed from the people that were South Atlanta was $45 million here. We did one for five, and it's actually ahead of schedule and under budget. So it, it's done in a manner that our community can afford. It can shoot anything, okay? And if it doesn't work, we'll rent it to Pilot.com and have their facilities there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like that. Food, no <laughs> yes. Hey, Tom, this, this can accommodate commercials. It's not just depending on a big time movie. I mean, in fact, some of the deals that they have talked about, they have actually talked to some people about a long term lease, okay, that would then sublease it to various things that they own. So, yes, I mean, TV shows can be. Uh, shot there, uh, talk shows can be shot there, anything, commercials, gaming, anything can be done there. It's a full-fledged facility. It's not just about, you know, getting some huge movie coming. Yes? I understand that the lease will pay off the bonds. Um, so I wonder, is there any other tax revenue <coughs> other than the sales tax to be gained? from the movie theater or the complex? Not the, not the movie theater or the complex because it's actually owned by the IBA. So what you're after is if it's, you're making an investment, if it pays for itself, creates jobs, and generates sales tax revenue. And like I say, the, the example that I used in, in Toronto, a $25 million payroll injected into your county, you know, that's a bunch of money floating around that, that multiplies on out. But our people in the county, if they want to be part of this, are definitely going to have to join that union, right? Yeah, and, and see, they, working for something like that is, is not, it's not your normal nine to five job and after, you know, it, it, it's, they, they work based on sets. You have a lot of people in the area that are a member, not necessarily in Pauline County, but around, and I mean, they go work wherever. I mean, they may be working in Nashville. I mean, a lot of the people that actually worked and shot on foot, Footloose lived in the general area and drove here every day. Okay. Is there information somewhere in the county for people that want to be part of this and hopefully get hired on, join the union? Does the county have some kind of information? Directly? Well, uh, again, not the county, but Atlanta Film Studio. They actually have a website. Like I say, Jeremy is the contact right now until they get their person on the ground here. Is the union more open office here? I have no idea. Well, the, the, the studio itself, the actual buildings are done, they're testing everything, and, and the opening will be in January, is when they're actually saying what Nick and Jeremy told me that they would be in January. Other questions? Yes, sir. Are there any plans for any new hotels? We don't really have the space to accommodate a lot of people. There's no high-end hotels here. So. Now, from a standpoint of the county, no. But if, if when you leave, does everybody know where the studio is? No. Oh, okay. I should have brought a picture then. Uh, on Bill Carruth Parkway, if you if you go down 278 and you turn left on Bill Carruth Parkway, uh, go past, what is it, Greystone Subdivision and Thompson Road turns to the left. Okay? When you turn left on Thompson Road, it's right there on the right. Uh, that's where the uh, studio is is located. Just before uh, you cross over the Silver Comet Trail there. Long way, yeah. Yeah, on Bill Perut, yes. Yes, yeah. Just before the bridge over the Silver Comet Trail. I had to think about it because Thompson yeah. Road crosses the Silver Comet Trail too. But yes, yeah, I mean, you can actually see the facility there on Bill Perut Parkway. But as far as hotels and stuff, you, if, when you leave there, you notice all that land on the right-hand side of the road that's flat, zoned. 
that's an area where things can. See, it, it, a lot of it ties into what the hospital. I don't, have y'all had Mark come talk about the hospital? Okay, well, actually, last week they actually received the certificate of need. So the hospital is beginning. If you go down 278 there at Bill Carruth, you noticed all that yellow equipment sit, sitting there and the little pink ribbons. They're actually starting the median cut now for the hospital. They'll actually pull permits for the hospital and the medical complex in April of next year. So it'll all begin at one time. So you've got all that converging in that area. And again, that's where, as, as you have people in the area, as activity goes, people will be interested in building motels or hotels. Uh, it, it changes the dynamics of things as this thing moves in. Other questions? There's not, from a standpoint of us, but yes. But if you would like to do one, I know there's people that would. But, but no, I mean, I mean, the, the activity that is bred by this will. Now, I do know that there was a group that not in the hiring, but in Dallas here, that was looking at doing a a higher end facility. But I, I think financing became a problem with that. So. Um. What's next? What's next? What's next? Come on, come I don't, I don't, I don't know what, what, what's next. I mean, you know, we have issues, and I don't know how much time I have. Uh, I mean, there are issues facing the county. Y'all realize that? Uh, I know Ford knows this. That that there's what 167 or 197 subdivisions in Paulding County, representing 9,500 lots, and 6,000 of those are vacant. Okay, at 100 building permits, it's only 60 years that we'll use those up. But, but that's not the real problem. The real problem is on those vacant lots, out of those subdivisions, 67 of them we have no bonds on. In other words, these are just the platted lots. So what happens is that, that when a subdivision is platted, we take a bond that they put their infrastructure in, but we have a bond that supports that if they don't finish it, we can. Well... Some of the bonds weren't good. Some of the bonds were cash bonds that were held in banks that got took over by the FDIC. And guess what? The FDIC didn't honor them. So we, we, the county has formed what's called, and you may have seen it in the paper, an infrastructure task force, that, that there are issues out there with these developments. I mean, we have developments that 80% developed the final work was never done on the subdivision, the people are long gone, the bond's no good, somehow we gotta fix that. We have developments that are 25% complete, okay? The people are long gone, streets need topping, you got people living in there, you got streets cracking, there is no bond on. And then we have developments that they might be five houses in. Uh, so we, we formed a task force that will actually look at all these things. We have to figure a way to deal with them. Some of it's, and man, it's not simple, but some of it's you just have to bite the bullet, find the money, and fix them. Some of them, I mean, there's infrastructure issues. You know, you got these vacant subdivision, it causes vandalisms. People steal your manholes. When they steal your manholes, water comes into your sewer system, which costs money. Uh, water lines in the ground that no water's flowing through, that's not healthy. So we're going to be looking at ways to address those, whether it's coming up with a budget and funding process to pay them, whether it's actually, you know, cutting the line off, putting the fence up and say anything past this, we know y'all gave us the roads, but we don't want them, you can have them back. Um, you know, because actually one of the biggest, the, the number, you know what the number one complaint the marshal's office has? Tall grass. Okay? Number one complaint, and it's in these subdivisions, the vacant lots, a lot of them the banks own. 
that cutting the right away, and people complain about it. You know, I mean, you got all these things. So there's tons of issues that have to be addressed. So, but anyway, that's one thing. Yes, ma'am. Do we have any that are so underdeveloped that we can go in, buy four or five houses, take that whole subdivision, and rezone it maybe as commercial or industrial? Do we have any that we can do that you, with? You, the houses are not the issue, but there are developments that there's undeveloped land in. There's developments that, yes, there you know there are only maybe four or five houses in. Um, and there will be opportunity for redevelopment. In fact, that's one of the things. Now, that's not necessarily what the infrastructure task force is going to do, but there's going to be stuff because, I mean, there was a time period here. Everybody believed every piece of land was a perfect subdivision. Never was so and never will be so. We'll have to find other uses for the property. I don't know what that is, but we will. Yes? It sounds like at the studio there's a lot of big companies that are providing services to the studios. Do you think there's an opportunity for small businesses that provide business services at the studio? And if so, how would they take advantage of that? I, I would say yes. And again, Jeremy Harrington. Contact. I mean, because there's, there's security needs, there's office equipment needs, all those things. I mean, when... When a film comes here and they, they rent a studio or they rent a, the, the facility, they rent office space there, they rent the equipment to go in there, they rent the furniture to go in there, they rent everything. Or either they buy it and throw it away. Um, so yes, there are opportunities and Jeremy is the contact for that. Catering is another big thing. Because when, like... The, the deal in, in Hiram when Footloose, they fed all those people while they were here. They had them food here. I mean, so it's, you know, it's, a mo it's like a moving community that goes around with it. Somebody else had a question. It's not related to the studio. I'm curious what's going in there at the old Sunny's location. Uh, they're moving Kaufman Tire there. And down by the We Care Medical Building? All these. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Down, down by Wick here is is all these. Uh, yes. Have you heard uh, how uh, plane hangar rentals are going? Or the thirteen uh, T hangers are rented. There are, I think, seven, no, six other planes and a jet that are headquartered there. Uh, they started a what is it? A thirty-five thousand square foot corporate style hangar. Uh, there's issues with the concrete. Uh, it looks like a skateboard went across it. So that's kind of slowed them down. But, but uh, Scott Beal, who actually owns a uh, majority of Paul and Jet Center, has bought a company called ADI, which I don't know exactly what that stands for, but they're out of Michigan. Uh, they provide charter services. They have seven other locations across the United States. They also do interior work on planes, third-party maintenance, and he intends to bring that here to the airport there. But the planes that are parked here and hangered here will be actually bringing in uh, tax revenue, tax yes. Now, now again, it, it's based on January 1st, and I think there were seven or eight on January 1st. So what's the jet that's actually there, we won't get the money until next year. Yes? One forward jet brings an interrupt 30000 a year. I don't, I mean, you know, it's probably worth, what, two, three million dollars. It's actually Paul and Jet Center's jet that they use for charter services and stuff. So, no, it's it's good money. Yes, sir? Status of the reservoir. Do what now? Status of the reservoir. Status of the reservoir. Uh, we have filed what's called the 404 permit, which is the permit that you have to file to, um, to have the right through the EPA to build the reservoir. Public hearing is December the 14th, I think. It's either the 14th or 15th, maybe the 15th, up at uh, Burn Hickory Park at the Wayne Kirby Community Center. Uh, it's important that people come because you can bet one group of people that will have nothing to do with Paulding County will be there. And they're called tree huggers. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. They'll be there, okay? And unless the community comes out, what gets reported on public comment is going to be what the tree huggers say. So 
it's important to be there because it will determine about getting the permit. Now, the next phase of that is that gets you the permit to build the lake. They're, they're actually in the process of filing what they call the uh, withdrawal permit, which actually allows them to withdraw the water from the Etowah River, and they're in the process of filing that. So once the permits are in place, the next thing is finding the money to build it. Yes, sir? Mary, the next step, what would be the realistic earliest date that something would be happening? On the actual... Actually moving... When he can ski on it. When he can't <laughs> ski on it because there will be no motorized um, boats allowed, okay? Because it is actually a water use reservoir, so you can't use a gasoline motor on it. I, I don't know. I, I know they're telling me that, that they hope to have the 404 in hand next year. I mean, if money's good, you're looking at at least five years before you actually see something. Uh, the route is selected, everybody along the route uh, to have to lay the pipeline. Because again, we've owned, the, you know, we've owned the land for the reservoir since 1999. Uh, but the route is selected to get to the Etowah River. Uh, Bartow County's on board, they helped design it. So, you know, all the property owners have been contacted. Now, it's not been acquired, but it's laid. Um, one interesting thing, one thing that takes so long is, is called a thing called mitigation through the EPA. Somewhere just the mitigation cost on the low side, seven million, on the high side, 12 million for the right to build the lake. So, thank you. Are we grandfathering on the EPA? No, no, no. See, that was. It was a, the, the actual the actual permit had been filed, I think, in 07, and it got put on administrative delay or whatever. But but anyway, that's once it got reactivated, the people that are Ron Harris and Associates that is actually guiding the process, they made us arrange for all the mitigation up front before it was ever submitted. And like I say, it depends on what they go with. Other questions? If not, thank you. Thank you, Tommy. That was very informative. And I'd like to say you done did good. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, it's time for our drawing. We're going to have some fun here. Um, just got a couple of gifts here and then the banner line ad from Pat Hughes with Parting.com and the half page um, magazine ad um, donated by Ed Chapman. We start with. Okay, it, we start with the um, uh, Parting.com line ad. Um, the winner is. If you have your red tickets, 815404. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what do I get? Thank you. And make sure you see Pat ahead of time so they have okay. enough time to go ahead and. <laughs> <laughs> And the um, Ed Chapman Community Magazine um, half page ad to be exposed in the magazine for next month. 815403. Right. Call in one. Pest solution. Please make sure Ed knows ahead of time because we've been having some issues that um, we have no one's been telling Ed about the, um, the ads that they're winning and they're getting away from us. So <laughs> give him enough time to design the ad and you'll be exposed for the month. Um, we have a mug, emails, everybody enjoy your family, enjoy your friends, look out for your neighbours, keep those in need in your heart, pray for them, help them out, there's plenty of places out there that need our help right now. Next month's speaker. Next month's speaker, Deanna. Jim Galloway with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, he's the political insider. Oh, sorry. 